when America's most dangerous criminals head to prison. Extradition agents drive. On the open road, anything can happen. Can we do On any given day, Listen up. agents face attack, collision, and ambush. <laughs> So shut up and just sit down. The road to the big house can be deadly. I think this is about to get nasty. Prisoner transport makes for a dangerous drive. passenger van tearing down the highway carries deadly cargo. Inside are murderers, rapists, gangbangers, and drug dealers. All that's stopping these criminals from escape are metal grates and these men. Gordon Brooks is the founder and director of Prisoner Transport Company, U.S. Extradition. Agent Danny Lowe is his partner. Gentlemen, keep your hands on top of the fence. Come down, do a quick pack search, and we'll hook you up one at a time. In the U.S., thousands of convicts need transfers every day. Put your arm straight down. Gordon Brooks employs over 40 men and women to keep up with demand. His agents cover over 12 million miles each year, transferring inmates from jail to prison, delivering parole violators, and returning fugitives. We're basically transporting America's deadliest fugitives nationwide. We're the middleman in between that arresting agency and their final destination. These are some pretty bad dudes that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Two-year veteran Danny Lowe is a promising young agent. Uh, second row to the left. I feel this is a very dangerous job. You start to get used to it and you start to get comfortable with it. But the, the element of danger will always be there as long as you have an inmate on board. As much respect as you give me and Agent Brooks is exactly what you're going to get back. The less respect, the less respect you get. Does that understand? With a fleet of over 30 vehicles, U.S. extradition moves up to 1,500 criminals each month. And business is booming. And there's always another mission. We have missions on top of missions simultaneously going. The job ahead is the toughest yet. You ready to get started with this mission? I've been ready to get this done. Ready as we're going to get. The marathon covers 3,860 intense miles, with inmates itching to escape. The first stop is a murderer in upstate New York, then through Pennsylvania and Ohio to Kentucky for a 32 convict mass pickup. They'll push on through Texas and Arizona to the finish line, Sacramento, California. Over the next five days, the brutal cross-country road trip will test their limits. Fatigue is gonna be a very big issue. It's gonna beat the heck out of both of us and it's, it's, it's long and, and nasty. On the road to prison, what can go wrong often does. This is all that's left of a prison van after it collided with a big rig on an Alabama highway Friday. A typical transport can turn deadly in a matter of seconds. Witnesses say the van burst into flames on impact, killing everyone inside. On this treacherous trip, Brooks and Lowe can't afford to lose focus. It was a wild afternoon in Santa Fe County that started off with an inmate escape and ended with a deadly crash off of Airport Road. You can be killed every day. Every day is a different day. Every day you have to be on guard, uh, be on top of your game. To meet their grueling schedule, 
the agents hit the road by early morning. You know, I love you, as always. Okay, love, love you. Love you. All right, boo. The agents' wives know each goodbye could be the last. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you, too. See you when you get back. Call me as soon as you get there. All right. I love you. Be careful. Love you, too. It's, he likes to tell me that his job is not dangerous, but I believe otherwise. I get scared a lot. Out on the highway, Brooks and Lowe mentally prepare for rebellion and resistance. When they're coming out of the jail cell, that's their chance to try to flex their muscle to intimidate you. The first thing they're doing is sizing us up. And this is where your command presence come into play. My, my wife calls it my agent voice. You swell up just a little bit. You got to put a little bit more air in your body. Just make yourself look a little bit bigger. To control combative prisoners and stay on the road, they need the right vehicle. Transport vehicles drive a quarter million miles annually and last only three years each. This drive requires the star member of the fleet. We have approximately 35 vehicles in our fleet, but uh, this is the ultimate in prisoner transport vehicles. It's the big daddy vehicle of them all. Welders in Fort Worth, Texas, customized the Ford E350 van with inmates in mind. First, they install thick eight-gauge steel cages that slide to separate problem prisoners. The crew covers all bolts so inmates can't unscrew them. Metal bars under each seat prevent prisoners from passing makeshift weapons. Big Daddy is fully loaded with a color camera and monitors to guard against escape plots. The onboard bathroom makes stopping unnecessary. With a 235 horsepower engine and 37 gallon tank, Big Daddy is a fast traveling jail cell and agents are highway wardens. Today, extradition agents Gordon Brooks and Danny Lowe start a 3,800-mile prisoner transfer, the longest of their careers. At 10 a.m. on day one, they're 50 miles from Syracuse, New York. Yes, Agent Brooks, Director of Operations, U.S. Extradition. Good, good. We're about 10 miles out. We're en route to pick up Mr. Robert Davis being extradited. The first job order is from the Central New York Psychiatric Center. This, this isn't our normal typical day prison. This is a maximum security psychiatric unit. Inmate Robert Davis moves today from a psych ward to prison to begin a life sentence for capital murder. We take no, no individual lightly. This individual is a bad dude, just based upon his charges. This jail contains over 200 mental patients. In 1998, Davis shot two men on a city street corner. Brooks secures the felon with waist chains, double locked handcuffs, and foot shackles. He checks and rechecks the steel chains. Carelessness could spell disaster on the road. They're very crafty bastards, and they will take you out if given opportunity. You have to be on point at all times. Stand back over there. All right, come on in, take a seat. Any questions, concerns about anything, sir? No. no. When's the last time you ate? Oh, uh, I ate breakfast about two hours. Okay, all right. I'm Major Brooks. I run operations. We're not going to have any problems, correct? No. Mental patients are, are a little bit different. These individuals, they're unstable, they're taking a lot of medications at any given point, it may not be in the right frame of mind. Mr. Davis. Yeah. OK, when do you take your meds next? Uh, about 8 to 9. OK, what are your medications for? Uh, schizophrenia. Mental patients wear green jumpsuits, but all rules of the road still apply. 
They're still handcuffed, waist chain, and leg shackled, and treated just as any other inmate at any given time. Brooks and Lowe can't take chances, especially while transferring a lifer. The murder guys, they're, they're the worst to deal with because they don't, they don't have anything to lose. They're, they know where they're going. If they escape or if they get in trouble on the van, you can't add any more time to the life sentence. Even with a convicted murderer behind them, the agents can't overlook the road ahead. Still just driving down these roads. Semi-trucks like to cut you off. Uh, young kids in fast cars like to cut you off. Typical everyday driving situations. Then they're amplified because we spend so much time on the road. For the next 100 hours, 3,000 miles in 10 states, they'll face all of the hazards the road offers up. Well, we got to be concerned at all times with the basic road conditions of just driving a vehicle, period. Traffic, <laughs> weather, detours, minor incidents become life and death scenarios with inmates on board. Day one of the drive stretches into night. Right now it is one o'clock in the morning. Prison transport is no nine to five job. All right, about uh, five minutes away from Greensburg, Pennsylvania to pick up a male and a female inmate. Um, depending on the facilities, we can pick up inmates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With fatigue bearing down, the agents push to stay alert. The next inmate has a history of violence. We have to be on our guard even though it's late evening due to the the male inmate we're picking up, he is uh, wanted for a capital murder in the state of Texas. Agent Lowe, U.S. extradition, picking up one male, one female. Tonight, James Edwards takes his second trip with U.S. extradition. This time, he returns to Huntsville, Texas on murder charges. Take a seat right there. Laura Spencer faces drug charges in Corpus Christi. To keep order, the agents use Big Daddy's sliding cages to separate males and females. Edwards, I ain't gonna have no BS, you understand? The agents roll on for 60 more miles before they can rest. After 17 hours on the job, Lowe exits near Pittsburgh and drives toward a local prison to house the inmates. Normally we can call any facility in the nation and get a courtesy hold for overnight housing. And then we'll go and get posted up at a local motel so we can get some rest. Inmates can't stay at just any motel. The agents rely on jails for courtesy holds. Agent Lowe, U.S. extradition. I have a courtesy hold for tonight. All right, guys, listen up. We're going to be getting in here for the night. We're going to go in and go get some sleep. I will be back first thing in the morning to get you loaded up. Y'all don't make any moves when I have these doors open, OK? Inside, the wardens unshackle the inmates for sleep. But the level of supervision varies at each local prison. Inmates could arm themselves or arrange for help escaping. That individual may go into a holding cell, may have access to the phone, and make a phone call to one of his uh, gangbangers or uh, fellow comrades in the criminal justice system. But to sleep, it's a risk they must take. With the inmates secured, the agents drive to the nearest motel for a few hours rest. Sleeping is a very fine luxury that we sometimes do get. Any rest they grab now is key. They have four more punishing days to go. Agents Brooks and Lowe drive cross-country with dangerous criminals in a prison van. After the first night stop, they're back on the road for day two by dawn. So how you feel today, man? I'm good now. You? Got a little beauty sleep and took a nice little hot shower. I'm ready to push on. At the Ohio border, they've done 500 miles and now have four inmates in back. Two are in for murder. Come 
this is Alpha Team Leader. Be advised we're pulling off on four lunch break. Copy that, another five state police. Midday food stops are necessary, but tense. Whenever the vehicle is stopped and you have civilians around you, those I think are the most dangerous times that we have uh, for anything to happen. Dinner time, fellas. That's where we're most vulnerable. Um, we're stationary, we're not a moving target at that point. Um, we're sitting ducks. Once those doors open, you've just opened the whole world and all the environment to those inmates to do whatever they've been back there thinking about. Right over here. Happy meal number one. Happy meal number two. Thank you. Happy meal number four. Oh, I got the toy. Do not okay. open the toy. All toys? Do Let's not go. open the toy. Straws, cups, and toys toy may look harmless, but could become weapons within seconds. Guys, when you're done, I, I need your straws back. Without the toy, the toy could be used as a weapon. This isn't a road trip, a vacation trip, where we're giving out happy meals and toys. They can use just about anything for a weapon, especially sitting behind these bars and to find facility. They had nothing else better to do but find ways of how to get out of the handcuffs, waist chains, and shackles um, and take you out. Brooks, you have this cup of your straw? Yeah. Cup of straw. Even when stopped, the agents can't rest for a split second. Most trips last three days. The stress of this one is mounting for low. My body's exhausted, and we're not even close to being finished on this trip. We still got I don't know, seven, eight more states to go through, and, and we got 30 more inmates to pick up. Yeah, we, we just started this. Back on the road, Brooks gets a troubling call about tomorrow's 30-prisoner pickup in Kentucky. Yeah. The intel that I received so far from my agents on ground in Kentucky that these inmates that we're picking up are very highly agitated at this present moment. They had to physically move a couple of them from one cell to another cell. They're already wound up, which means it's gonna be even more intensified when we get there. If Brooks and Lowe can't gain control off the bat, their chances of reaching the finish line are slim. So I think Agent Lowe and our security detail are gonna have our hands full. This is where uh, we're gonna to have to put on the gloves and go to work. The next morning, to keep surprise on their side, they roll in at 5 a.m. Right now in their sleep, we're gonna go in here with these chains, round the chains, and the little wake-up call. Daddy's here to take you home. And we're here at Ohio County in Kentucky, where we're about to start this major mass move situation. It's early morning hours. We're about to go in here and wake these inmates up and uh, start rocking and rolling. The mass pickup requires 64 shackles, six additional agents, and three extra vans to carry all the prisoners. This dangerous drive just got 10 times bigger. Early morning in Northern Kentucky, a team of agents from U.S. Extradition preps for a mass move of 32 prisoners. This is the big one. We're gonna start figuring out who's going where, line them up, make sure everybody's got their property, money, meds, and paperwork, and um, we're gonna get everybody start rolling across the United States. Agent Brooks starts with the two women. Put your arms out, turn around. Prisoners come in, in many different forms. Any kind of law you could break is what we transfer. To cut down on confusion, they color code the uniforms. Inmates traveling in the follow vans get red vests. Turn around, face the wall. The worst of the group, riding on Big Daddy, gets standard orange. With over 30 inmates, mistakes are more likely. I'm gonna just double checking Agent Brooks's cuffing techniques. You wanna make sure all that stuff's secure. Um, when we get them out, you don't want to get a kick in the face. Okay, what is your name? The new inmates seem compliant, but Brooks knows he's being watched. Individuals are sizing you up. Can I take this guy? Is he shaky putting on the handcuffs? Um, you have to know your job inside now. Turn it off, bring him out. At only 6 a.m., they slip behind schedule. The convoy vans are late. With his hands tied, Brooks loads the inmates into a holding yard to wait. Tell me, going to chill out here inside the cage. We got 20 minutes till the team come. Okay. 
Without transport vans, the agents focus on who they've got on the ground. Escape attempts often occur during the confusion of transit. The inmates having guns and vehicles. Unlikely seeming inmates may be the first to flee. We don't know exactly uh, how they were able to do it. A prisoner looking to run takes any chance presented. Extremely dangerous. They are more dangerous. They are more desperate. They are still armed, and we consider them extremely dangerous. And all of a sudden, he pulls a gun and says, give me your keys. And he said, give me the keys, or I'll kill you. Yeah, what's your status? The convoy van delay allows the inmates to establish who's who before the trip even starts. Right now, we're just ascertaining who we have on board, who we're dealing with, trying to identify any type of cliques that are forming. Cliques pit inmates against the agents and encourage rebellion on the van. Right now, I see two or three cliques that are joined together. As you see over there, the dude that's all tatted up and the older gentleman, he's the old G right there. Both of them done some serious time in prison. They're starting to click up. So we got to continue to monitor the conversation and uh, their activity. Hey, boss man, oh. big man. Come here. <clears throat> Talk to me a little bit about your tattoos. I see that big uh, tattoo in the back of your neck. What is it all that about? Just culture. OK. All about culture? Yeah. Any gang affiliation? Yes, sir. Who do you run with? Latin Kings. Latin Kings? Yes, sir. So what's your status within the Latin Kings? Locked up nothing right now. OK. Have you denounced your gang? No, sir. The Latin Kings have an estimated 100,000 members. As the convoy pushes through the next six states, they'll cross areas where the Latin Kings have influence. Yeah, what's your status? All right, how far out are you? After 40 minutes, the vans are still en route. All they can do is wait. Uh, yeah, Dukes. All right. After an hour, tempers flare. You got business to do. My business between me and my God, and I'm going to take care of that. That comes before your business and any other business on this earth. All right, thank you. I'm letting you know that. Because these cuffs will come off eventually. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just as inmate attitudes erupt, the convoy vans arrive. The agents meet okay, so to go over the route. We're going to go to Whitfield, Tennessee, OK? But he's following us. OK. Then we're going to go to West Memphis. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. To the van, let's go. Let's go, two straight lines, keep the line straight. Come on, inside, let's go. Flat on up. Mr. Regular, the turn for Stay right here. They're already a handful. Can't even wait for what the rest of this trip's gonna bring, because they're already starting out, so. Uh, it's gonna be fun. We're going all the way to Cali, right? Yes, sir. It's a long ass ways away. You going? I'm going with you. It's me and you the whole way. Man. So me and Brooks, those are two people that you, you just don't want to piss off right now. Extradition agents Gordon Brooks and Danny Lowe just picked up 32 prisoners in Kentucky. Now at mid-morning, the four-van convoy flies south through Kentucky. Inside the lead van, Big Daddy, one inmate's voice rises above the rest. Stephen Montgomery, known as California, returns home to Sacramento for drug and theft charges. Yeah, we have one guy back there right now that he, he's the ringleader. He's the one that's in charge of, of, of the comedy and, and the, the smart remarks. Oh, you thought I was going to be nice, huh? <laughs> I played you. <laughs> Ringleaders can turn the van against the agents in minutes. How's your bitch? We comics, boy. Ain't nothing for life. 
it. You have individuals that's going to take control of the van and start speaking up. He's going to be the base exposed person or the ringleader of that group. The unrest grows, but Brooks is forced to stay on track. Tonight, they pick up the deadliest fugitive they've ever encountered, and they can't be late. We have a very high profile inmate being flown in from Puerto Rico who attempted to commit murder on a police officer um, and is a white supremacist, um, very, very bad dude. The fugitive lands tonight at an airport 300 miles away. The convoy has no time to waste. But as the miles tick by, order evaporates. On a prison van, chaos is dangerous. Brooks stops the vehicle to regain the upper hand. <laughs> hey, hey, keep it up. Hey, keep it up. This is what we're going to do right here, OK? We're going to get out for a minute. We're going to do a restroom break. Any questions? Thank you. All right, let's go. Keep it quiet. Pop it up. OK, give me two lines warmed up right here on me, right here. Keep it quiet, man. FaceTime so allows Brooks to assert control with the ringleader, Stephen Montgomery. You know I mean? Talking about they did this and did that. And they ain't did shit. Feel me? I don't give a f man. This is the block, man. You know what I mean? My block. See me, man. You know what I mean? You see me, you know what I mean? <laughs> what's wrong? Hey. Mr. California, what's up with you and your attitude? Man, my attitude is, man, we getting treated like this, man. You feel me? Isn't that how it goes? Oh, yeah. Okay. We got motherfuckers kissing asses to these deputies. You know, matter of fact, ain't no deputies, man. You know what I mean? Right now, you're in our custody, you know? <laughs> All right. Brooks can see the inmates' attitudes are worsening, but he has no more time for talk. The airport is still 200 miles away. On isolated stretches of highway, the agents stay on high alert. Empty roads invite ambush. An ambush is when somebody wants that person out of that van, and they'll stop at nothing to do it. The nightmare situation, say you just picked up a high-profile individual, a gangbanger from a facility. You see a Jeep following you, telling you for the last 25, 30 miles. You, you don't know who you're dealing with. Um, it's not our job to find out. It's our job to get a hold of emergency personnel and have them respond to assist us. Ambush is an extradition agent's worst nightmare. It's 4 p.m. Big Daddy must meet the fugitive in two hours. This individual was a high-profile gang member was involved in attempted uh, assassination of a police officer. While awaiting trial, Ken Greenwood fled the country. He heading over to Puerto Rico where he was stopped and detained by authorities over there. Greenwood returns to the States today with a thicker rap sheet and a bigger reason to attempt escape. This is the bad guy. This is the baddest of the baddest. He was going away on a little vacation trip overseas, but it didn't quite work that way. You're asking the wrong mother how they caught me because I thought I had it. This individual is going to be very troublesome on the truck. Chill out. You understand? Listen up. You're going inside this vehicle. We ain't going to have any issues. You understand what I'm saying? I hear you. OK. You know, I understand you. OK, but I hear you. you. If you act up, we'll deal with it. Otherwise, you'll be going a different round. No, I think you want to do that. That's fine. All right, Rock and go. roll. All right, let's go. The van's already mm -hmm. full of angry inmates. With this addition, the agents may lose all control. It's evening on day three of a massive prisoner transfer. 
Agents Gordon Brooks and Danny Lowe just added a deadly fugitive to the crowd of criminals. It's up to Brooks and Lowe to deliver the attempted cop killer, Ken Greenwood, to waiting federal officials. This is the bad guy. This is the baddest of the baddest. There isn't anything worse in the world than a cop killer. <laughs> How's that view? This individual would take on anyone. Only a few miles down the road, and already Greenwood dominates the van. Got to get all up in my pretty little grill. The, <laughs> the other inmates feed off the fugitive's energy. With Greenwood on board, the ride becomes more dangerous by the second. Knock it off. Listen up, guys. I swear to God, every time you hey, hey, keep it up. It's clear he's too hostile for a group ride. They need him off the van. They call in a private vehicle to send Greenwood straight to the federal marshal. All right, sir, we're gonna go on a little trip. Do it. Good luck with that. I think this is about to get nasty. <laughs> The second the agents feel him fight, they put hands on and go to work. Oh, I ain't going back, bitch. When he resists, the agents slap him with a restraint called the hog tie. Oh, well, we're gonna do it like oh, this. Oh, you awesome Hercules. Oh, mother. I wasn't going back. Damn. Because people want to talk to you, bro. I know. Everybody wants to talk to me. I'm popular. It's all good. I'm famous. Everybody right, together. An agent takes Greenwood directly to the marshals. We're going to the sheriff's department. Straight to the marshals. They stand by. We placed hands on him, he still continued to resist. I probably getting him on the ground, we gave him verbal commands to comply, he refused. He just lost it, that's what we're talking about, they snap, they just snap. Basically handcuffed him from behind for better control, and ran a waist chain from the back, um, his handcuffs down to his leg shot. We're trained, we, that's, that's what we do. The guys on board, they now know what they, get serious, you're gonna get handled. That was probably the worst one I've transferred yet. Oh, <laughs> The meanest looking, the meanest acting, the biggest charges, ones I've transferred yet. The agents can't let the adrenaline high distract them. They're still on the clock with a cage full of inmates. Maybe he was, you might not tell You want to try round two? Ooh, that's dang, man. It's over 1,900 miles to the end of the road, Sacramento, California. Day four. Today, they'll log over 1,200 miles of desert in West Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. At a jail in Cold Spring, Texas, they'll drop off seven inmates, but take on seven more. A risky proposition this late in the game. Once we get this group of individuals on board, and some of these individuals will be getting off board, the whole chemistry of the van will change. They're all gonna start puffing their chests up. They're back there with their clicks right now. Well, now I'm introducing more people. By late morning, they arrive in Cold Spring. Turn face wall, slide in. Down the middle, clump. Everyone in, let's go. Slide on down. Break it off against the wall. The seven inmates who've reached their destination get their old clothes back. For the new batch of seven getting shackled, the drive is just beginning. Put your arms down. This late in the game, new blood could cause tension behind the cages. Throughout day four, the crew does drop-offs in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and then Phoenix, Arizona, where the convoy splits off.
Tonight, Brooks and Lowe are looking at a brutally late shift. They can see troubles ahead. Hey, right, look, look, real talk. You can give a little bit. Knock it off. Knock it off. Hey, you like me have a little headache tonight, so it's gonna be a rough night tonight. Chemistry, as you can see, is starting to change. Come on, boy, come on. Hey, yeah, hey, man. Cali business, come on. Cali business, chill out, all right? The California team is not gelling with the Texas crew. The friction is starting to set in. Let's hey, just chill out. We got a long night, fellas, all right? Gordon grabs a rest in the follow vehicle while Danny drives the graveyard shift. Here for a long night. An hour later, Lowe's patience is wearing thin. These guys are wound up right now. They are just trash talking, um, trying to get a rise out of me as best they can. Stress always high, anxious, stressed out. Want to get done with this and get back to my wife. At 1 a.m., with hours left to go, Danny's nerves are shot. They've been sitting with me for, what, three, four days now, learning what buttons to push. I mean, they've been sitting there trying, and now they've started to figure it out. A word is your word, just like you. A man got to give a little bit. And a little kid would be home. We ain't in no Texas no more. Texas, man. I swear to God, every time you open your mouth from here on out tonight, that light will come on and it will stay on. So shut up and just sit down. I'm getting tired of hearing your mouth. If I hear your voice, it comes back on. I'm getting irritable. He's being loud constantly. I don't even hear the words he's saying. It's just a dull, nasty noise that I just can't stand, and it's his mouth. At the end of his rope, Danny Lowe heads toward the home stretch, prison transport's most dangerous part. Albie, you got a copy? Extradition agent Danny Lowe drove through the night with four angry inmates pushing his buttons. Today, on day five, Lowe speeds up Interstate 5 through Southern California. He has 384 miles until Sacramento. Stephen Montgomery, the ringleader on the van, has Lowe in his crosshairs, and he turns up the volume with every mile. He has his sights set on me right now, and uh, he just wants to make my life hell. With Brooks in the follow vehicle, Lowe braces for the home stretch. As inmates near their drop off, the reality of jail sets in. That last stretch, that's when stuff starts to get hairy. That's what Lowe's, Lowe's ain't got that you dog. Feel me? These individuals do not want to go back to where they're going. Nobody wants to go to jail. They can freak out. The nicest person in the world can automatically be the most dangerous person there is just by seeing their jail coming up. The closer he gets to the big house, the more Stephen Montgomery zeroes in on Lowe. The biggest crybaby cop I ever seen was no, he ain't a cop, man. It's like a mosquito just buzzing in here. You can't get rid of it. That's exactly what it's like. But look, look, he ain't without his little gun. Love my job, love my job. Yo, the bad cop. That's where I got to tell myself every day. Yeah, man, I'm telling you the truth, man. This is not fair, man, you know what I mean? Being mentally drained and physically beat down from this trip, that, that it definitely had to do with them getting to me. If I could get out of here, I was so, I was so. I'm going back My thick skin was with the one that dropped for me. And uh, this has just made my life miserable. And that's what they wanted. They, they were successful and uh, they, my fault. I'm just done with them. Their attitudes suck. Uh, everything about them is just horrible. 
Halfway through day five, Lowe's stress level hits the boiling point. He stops the van to defuse the situation. So I've treated you bad the whole way? Yes. I've treated you bad the whole way. Don't look at us. Don't look at us, boy. So I didn't buy you those comfort You didn't buy this Okay. You know what? I'm done with you. Agent Brooks takes over the wheel for the next stretch. Listen up. We're going to handle our business. We're going to head up north. I don't want no more bull****. This has been one hell of a road trip. Some inmates decided to harass a partner, uh, Agent Lowe. Agent Lowe's in a different vehicle to kind of separate himself from the scene. The other deputy is a bad cop right now. So we would definitely have to be on guard. But we have five more hours left. How can we do something? What can we do? The chaos and tension escalate as the van rolls towards Sacramento. Man. Reality sets in that oh, you've been on the road having a good old easy time talking and sitting in a comfy chair. Oh, yeah. Well, now you're going to go sit on concrete. <laughs> After dropping off one more inmate, Lowe returns to Big Daddy for the final leg. Not anybody can do this job. No way. Um, I've seen people come in and spend an hour on the road and they have their own Greyhound ticket back home. Hey, Jello, we're back together again to finish this mission. We're on the last leg of this. We went down from uh, 32 inmates down to three. It's been a long journey. Finally, the road signs point to the finish line. After 110 hours and 3,800 miles, Big Daddy pulls into the county prison at Sacramento. Let's go, hop off the van. As the last three inmates shuffle inside, the exhausting drive is officially over. On the long drive to home base, Big Daddy is at last quiet. With all 32 prisoners delivered safely, the agents have time to reflect. It's been a real haul. It's been a, a crazy haul. Every day is a different day in this business. Uh, you can never wake up in the morning uh, roll over, kiss your loved one goodbye, and grab your lunch pail, and go for a typical day in the office. This was the longest mission I probably had. It was very strenuous. It was it was time consuming, um, mentally drained. It was it was a long mission. For Agent Lowe, this trip will become his last long drive for U.S. extradition. Not long after this transport, he moved on to a new profession. But Agent Brooks has many more missions to go. In the business of prisoner transport, there is always another dangerous drive.